Next we're asked to compare a real thick-walled hollow cylinder with the theoretical infinitely thin cylindrical shell. For the infinitely thin cylindrical shell, the moment of inertia was just mr squared because all of the mass of the cylinder was a distance r from the center. In the case of a thick-walled hollow cylinder, so it's hollow, but it's got a wall of some measurable thickness, the moment of inertia is one half m and then the sum of the squares of the inner and outer radii. So that's what I've got ri here is the inner radius, ro is the outer radius. I'd like to put that in the more convenient terms of i equals c m r squared. So we're just going to find what c is. So put everything in terms of the r would be the outer radius. So here, to make both terms r, let's take out a factor of outer radius. So I'm going to multiply the square of the inner radius by the square of the outer radius divided by the square of the outer radius. Then I can factor out a term of the square of the outer radius from both of these. So we have r outer radius squared, and then we have the square of the ratio of the inner to the outer radii here, plus 1. Then we can see that this is simply in the form of 1 half r inner squared over r outer squared plus 1 times mr squared. So our factor of c is just 1 half r inner over r outer ratio squared plus 1. Is this consistent with the limiting cases that we know? If we have a solid cylinder, that means that the inner radius is 0. So then this first term would be 0. We have 1 half times 1, and that's right. The coefficient c for a solid cylinder is 1 half. For an infinitely thin cylindrical shell, the coefficient c is 1. Is that what we get here? In that case, the infinitely thin cylindrical shell would be our inner is our outer. So this ratio becomes 1. We have 1 plus 1 times 1 half. That gives us 1. Everything's good. So if we have a thick-walled cylinder, how much difference does the thickness make? Notice what we're going to look at here is how the time depends on the inner radius of this cylinder. What I've got here is saying c equals c. So this is the expression for c given the time, and this is the expression for c of a thick-walled hollow cylinder. It's not the only way we could have set things up, but that's how we did it. Now I'm just going to solve this for time. Actually, I'm going to solve for t squared. If you really wanted to find the time, you just take the square root. So first thing I'm going to do, multiply everything through by 2. Get rid of that nasty factor of 1 half. That takes out the 2 in the denominator here. We have a 2, and then all our factor of 1 half is gone. Next, I add 2 to both sides to move this factor of 2 over here. So we have this equals this plus 3. Now if we want to solve for time squared, we just multiply both sides by s over g sine theta, which is what we've got here.